Are you looking for an internet talk radio station for your podcast? Look no further. At the helm of Passionate World Talk Radio are two women that want to provide a spot for you and your podcast to be heard. There are many other places for your podcast, but PWTR has the audience. You will not be disappointed. Our station has been on the internet for the past 16 years. Call us for more information. 484-364-1032. Or text Jeannie White, station manager at T-H-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S-H-O-W at gmail.com for a podcast show details. This episode of the Energy Stoners Cafe is sponsored by Passionate World Talk Radio and Lillian Caldwell. PassionateWorldTalkRadio.com Welcome to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, entertain. Welcome to the Energy Stoners Cafe. My name is Tony Quest, and I'm really happy that you're here. I like to interview the most interesting people I can find on the planet. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, relax, and listen. You're going to find that these guests are so intriguing, you'll wonder why you didn't know about them before. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back to the Energy Stoners Cafe. As usual... And as always, I seek out the most interesting people I can find on the planet. And sometimes they find me, and sometimes we find each other. Tonight I have a really interesting guest, and I'm really honored to have him. I'll start off by thanking him for his service. But I'll tell you, his name is Baz Porter. Now I have to also admit, I just think his name is really cool. Baz Porter. He actually is from Australia, and he lives on the West Coast in Southern California. The reason I'm interested in interviewing him is because Baz has a, well, first of all, he's been interviewed before me by NBC. NBC scooped me again. What am I going to do? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and so he is, he's somebody that people know about. And I'm really very, very honored and pleased to have him on the show and pre- present him to my my audience. But Baz is interesting to me because he, besides being a soldier, I believe that's the backstory from the UK. He's also a coach, a life coach. I'll use that term. And he has a vernacular in which he helps people that's called the mastermind class. And it's a class in which he helps you to uncover the unique traits within yourself that might be preventing you from moving forward to more revenue generation. I know a lot of people, especially people that I find on, on LinkedIn, including myself, besides wanting to spread a story, trying to do something that's good for someone or the whole, most people are there to, to connect with business people as well. So I'm going to talk to Baz about that. And thank you again, Baz, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be here. The privilege is mine and the honor is mine. Now, tell me some something more. We did speak at length and I very rarely interview people before the interview, but I just got so intrigued by you know what you actually do. And I, I sense that there's a lot in you that has to do with some inherent things within you that might have happened or you might have been born with. Tell me more. Well, I'm a life and business strategist now. I'm a mentor to many. Uh, I was I'm also a Special Forces veteran. So I use a lot of my skill set from my past. I suffered for many years with post-traumatic stress disorder, homelessness, uh, a lot of addictions. Uh, including alcohol and drugs. I was partial to the bottle and doing other things. But I use all that experience now to support other people in uh, changing their lives and also their businesses. And I know we all know life is not easy sometimes. Uh, life gets us down. Um, I truly believe in a better future for not just us, but our, our children's children. 
a lot of what I do is about leaving your legacy for others to pick up, to make the world a better place than we found it. So that's what I do, and I support others doing the same. So you you did you you made the decision at some point to to join the military. How did that come about? How did you decide to do that? As a young teenager, I ran away from home. I didn't have a bad childhood. I had a very um, privileged childhood. A very I wasn't abused or anything silly like that. Uh, but I was just rebelling against the world. I ran away from home several times. Came back. Came one hour again. It was just that cycle. And I eventually came in to contact with a organization, an organized crime organization, where I was stealing cars uh, or engines out of cars from uh, Heathrow Airport, where I eventually got caught. There was a sting operation. I was the only person to get caught. And the police gave me an ultimatum. Join the army or go to prison. Mm. So I joined the army. Bold choice at the time. And then straight after that, I did a a year's training course to enroll and enlist in the forces, uh, what they call junior leaders course. I then became very good at what I was doing. I became special forces. I went for special forces selection at British SAS. I ended up being passing there, the youngest person to pass um, in the course of the British history. And I consequently did 11 operational tours globally from Bosnia, Everything you probably heard of to the latest, yeah, Afghanistan was my last tour. I excelled in what I was doing. But within that, I saw a lot of bad things in the world, and it took its toll on me. So I did that for nine years. And then I decided to uh, leave that job and do something else. So at two, uh, 24 years old, I left the forces and then went back into... Uh, the UK. We didn't really know what I was doing. I was lost. Didn't know what PTSD was because it was not invented back then. All the, the language wasn't invented. It was called shell shock. I knew I had nightmares. I knew I had flashbacks, anxiety, alcohol problem. Even back then, um, I was drinking to suppress some things. And that was a cycle. I did a month of security work for a friend of mine who was a man, he's an amazing guy, his name's Jason. And I just said, I've had enough of doing this. And I asked my check, he gave me a nice fat check. I cashed it. Same day, I booked a flight out of the country and disappeared for seven years. Dropped my phone in the bin, sold my car, and that was me, gone. I ended up in Cyprus. Wow, I wish you could see our faces over here right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I looked at Jim's face, he's like, you know, it's like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, absolutely astonished, you know, by the way you've conducted your life and how far you've come. Now, I think that the fact that you have this mastermind class, now I, I realize that you, you have to have some kind of a strong mind or a certain kind of mind, mind to be successful. When people engage with your mastermind class, which I want to take your mastermind class, does it, do, does it turn out that it is very much a mind over matter thing? Is it more mental? I sense that, that you have a, a high level of intuition as well. Correct. Um, I think everything's combined. You can, have, you can be the most intelligent person in the world, but if you're not using your intuition, you're not using it accordingly, and then that's, that's when things go wrong. You know, that there's no substitute for using your own intuition yes what is there but um time for success is like it's, it's a master class that teaches people how to get from where they are to at least create a tangible plan a step-by-step plan to get you where you want to go and in that space of about 45 minutes to an hour we craft collectively we craft a plan for you that you have the potential to go and off, go off and help do it for you. I was going to ask, how can someone go online, let's say, and find out more about this? It's Baz Porter, B-A-Z, porter.com. I'm obviously on social media, Instagram, which is baz.porter. Facebook, just search Baz Porter. There'll be a business page of 40-something thousand. My Instagram something has like nearly 20 the content in there is about you. It's for inspiration. It's for guidance. 
the videos are my stories, but the messages are always about you because it's you're the important person. I'm I'm a result of where I was, but I choose to be here every day. And when I say humbly, it is a privilege to be here. It truly is. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. But like, why are you doing this? Because I believe in a better world. My belief is that we each have an opportunity to leave the the world um, in a better place than where we found it. And uh, my effort every day is to make that happen. If I can make someone smile every, <clears throat> every day, I do that. If I can point somebody in the right direction, I'll do that. If I can add value to someone's life in any way, that's what I'm here to do. Now, I see that you're also you know, a public motivational speaker. And when did you get tapped for that? How did that happen? It's part of what, I, what we do or what I do. Motivation is to a penny. I'm more of an inspiration than a motivation. The only people can motivate is yourself. So I inspire to motivate them. I've been on stages. I've been privileged to be on some very, very big stages in the world. Uh, Sharon Lecter, Dr. Greg Reed, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote Chicken Food for the Soul, uh, and a few others as well. But I truly inspire people through a story from honor to rags to purpose. Uh, riches are what I live every single day. My wealth is watching people smile and thrive in their lives. That's my wealth. I think it's amazing that you could have been homeless and you've evolved into this magnificent global citizen. You know, it's just amazing to me. I mean, did you have, when you were younger, did you have a vision of what your future would be? Did you feel anything within you that you aspired to? I imagine it wasn't this. I mean, as a child, I had a heart. I know I had a heart. There was more than I would ever possibly imagine. I mean, I, I was always gifted intuitively as a child. I just turned it off because I was scared of it. But as I grew up, uh, my time in the forces, I tapped into that intuitive uh, side of me again. It was what kept me alive a lot of the time. And then as I, I grew as a person, and I grew because of the events that happened to me, they didn't happen to me, they happened for me. But in actually stepping into that, I already knew there was an op- always an opportunity to be more, to do more. I believe that we every, every one of us have an opportunity to either to, step, to fully step into it or not. Either or is good, either or is okay. But I'm not here to be just okay. I'm here to live an extraordinary life. I'm here to change other people's lives. And if I can leave a legacy behind me when I go for a better world, then that's what I will do. But as a child, I always knew there was more, but I didn't know what it was. It's only very recently I've really stepped into it and embraced it because it was a scary, it's a scary world out there. You know, it's not, you don't just get here by chance. It takes work. And every, every day is a battle, especially with post-traumatic stress. There's no miracle cure for it. There's no miracle cure for trauma. But coming back to a resound balance within yourself, an emotional and mental state, you can work through it. You have an inner standing or an understanding of what's going on rather than just, this is happening to me. Tony Robbins says, it's happening for you. And once you realize that, fully embrace it, step into it, life does change. I'm very impressed by the fact that you said that, you know, and you were so uh, transparent that you said that you had a decent childhood. You weren't like a poverty stricken child. But so when I, I speak to people that say that and they're doing something extraordinary as you are, you don't have to do this. You know, you don't have to do this. You're all set. But yet you've decided to, to sort of reach down. I hate to say reach down, but reach over to somebody Perhaps I'm sure, I'm sure most of the people you work with are strangers and, and help them. What is it within you? Because I always try to figure out what is it within a person that makes them want to be um, spiritually generous? I believe we have an underlying uh, or underlying urge or calling, if you like. And most people are conditioned to take and keep on taking. But 
what if we started to give more than we took as a collective, as of, um, as people, not as individuals, but as a human race? I think the world would be a little different than it is now. The driving force behind what I do and people like me do is I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not alone doing this. There are many people trying to do it and I'm very successful. But the driving force is they want to give a message of hope to people who may have forgotten it. It's not that it's not there. It's still there. But they forget sometimes that they do matter. They are worthy of everything. And that message gets lost in translation in a very colorful world that's full of ne a lot of negativity and people willing to take advantage of others for their own benefit. And I've been subject to all of them, and I'm sure everybody else has as well. But I choose to give back because every day I wake, I wake up knowing that this future is possible, as long as some of people are given back, are changing lives for the right reasons. It's, it's you're operating from a, a place of love instead of a place of self-satisfaction. Yes. And, and considering everything you've been through, um, I just find it remarkable. I've never been in a war except with myself, you know, but I can imagine, I can imagine what it's like. I mean, I come from a, a military family on one side and some of the military people have seen some, some combat and I've seen what it can do to people. I just know that there must be something within you that might be somewhat, I want to say creative. I mean, what is it inside of you that, that makes you able to reach somebody when they're in a, a place of despair or, or feeling of hopelessness? I mean, were you, were you like this as a child? Did you try to help your friends? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? I was, bull I, I, I was bullied as a kid. Um, so I was always different at school. I viewed the world differently. And it made me have an empathy for a, a lot of people. Instead of hating, ha hating everything, I didn't sympathize, but I came to a sort of neutrality with it. And I reminded myself, I still do every day, that we're human. We're here to experience. We're here to evolve. And I, I, truly, I truly believe that the lessons learned in life are for us to evolve and also to give back is one of the greatest gifts that I will ever have. And empathy is, is very, very you know, poignant in a world that is forgotten about listening to other people. The art of listening isn't there with a lot of people. But why are people on podcasts? Because it's convenient. Why do people go and listen to YouTube instead of reading books? Because they're listening to information. But we need to start listening to the right information, not some of the fearful stuff out there and the negative stuff, which is very much uh, rife, as we all know. Yeah, there's a lot of fodder out there, I've been told. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you, how does, you know, your program, uh, the, ma the mastermind class, how does the program work? What does a person have to do, you know, to get involved? Just sign up. Uh, literally, it's, it's, a, it's a, a 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, it's held... Uh, every Monday evening, um, just go to the website. It's time for success. Come with a pen and paper, relaxed, open mind, and be willing to learn and experience something a little bit different. And you have talked about um, helping people sort of turn their situations, you know, their endeavors into a positive revenue stream. But it sounds like there is a very strong emotional component to doing that. I'm convinced to that. Is that true? Yeah, very much so. Um, I, I think there's there has to be a drive forward. You have to have a purpose. And every, everyone has a purpose. We just sometimes forget it. Uh, my purpose is to serve humanity. Um, I actually have a tagline of my, my mission is to create change, promote growth, bring harmony and prosperity to the world one person at a time. You know, it's very, very simple. And I remind myself of that every single day. The idea that there's a spiritual purpose behind everything we do. Spirituality in the last few decades 
has been widely embraced with science. So we've now established a science-based uh, uh, cause and effect from it. Um, so it's all vibration. What we think, we attract. What we behave like, we become. The people we surrender, we become the uh, the people we most surround ourselves with. If you look at your inner circles, who you surround yourself with, your most five the five people you most hang around with, you pick up their traits, you pick up their mannerisms, you become who they are. Likewise. But it's recognizing the things within you that can change the systems vibrationally that can bring other opportunities in. But it's also being aware and able and willing to step into to decisions and opportunities. And that's where the, the key lies is the opportunity and the willingness to step into it. It seems that you've taken your empathy because you've been through so much. I mean, you've been at the top. I mean, you had everything as a kid or whatever. And then you selected your process. And then by going into the service and having to make that choice, I think you made the noble choice, in my opinion, when you were given the choice of jail or service. But you've taken your empathy, it sounds like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, and you've, you've, you've transformed it into compassion, which I see is when you take empathy, you reject sympathy because sympathy doesn't help anyone, in my opinion, but you've taken your empathy and you've turned it to compassion. And compassion is when you actually do something to be a, a benefit to someone that's downtrodden or someone that's trying to achieve something or someone that has less than. The, the less than bit um, is is a perception because, and I, I know there's people out there going, oh, I've got nothing. But we remind ourselves every day that a bit of gratitude for what we do have in this present moment goes a long way. And the compassion comes from remembering that we're all equal. And the equality of that means we all fall on hard times but it's how we come back that matters. It's how we bounce back and go, actually, yeah, that, that was a bit difficult, but I'm still here. I've learned that lesson. Now I can teach other people how I overcame it. And that's what I learned to do with empathy, with compassion, but with or trying to be as selfless as possible. And that's what I truly believe in. Yeah. You know, I I really appreciate the fact, and I thank you, for, for bringing up the, the whole idea of gratitude. Gratitude has such a strong and positive vibration, especially when it's authentic and genuine. Yes, it does. It's very poignant when it comes to, uh, sort of the, especially this time in the world, where we forget to thank ourselves. We've done the best we can today. It didn't go perfectly. Things happened. But you've made it to the end of the day. Look in the mirror, be proud, and ask yourself if you're happy. Did you do the best thing you could do? If the answer is yes, no one could ask any more of you, and no one should. How do you change a mindset with somebody, though? I mean, you know, I know that it's a process, and, and you know, it's not really about me, but I know that it's a process to get to the point where you can look at yourself, accept a compliment even. Some people can't even accept a compliment. Mm -hmm. So so how do you, and from your point of view, how could someone, just a regular person that doesn't have the, the mindset of gratitude or the mindset of even feeling that they should thank themselves for something to change and make it different and have a, I think that, if you can have gratitude for yourself and the things that you have, it gives you the capacity to have empathy and then evolve into compassion, which to me is an action that one could take. It's not sympathy. I think people get it mixed up. Yeah, sympathy is looking down on somebody. Yeah. Empathy, empathy is treating people or looking as an, as an equal. I'll put it in a way like this. People can understand it. If I acted like a boss, I would be above somebody. If I acted as if I am a person 
who is of stature but trying to help elevate them in their life. That means I can come as an equal to them, not them coming to me as a boss. If someone said to me, I didn't turn up today, I'm not coming today, my first thought goes to not, well, why? Why aren't you coming in? What's wrong with you? And how can I help? How can I make your life better? The other question in that is the gratitude when you've forgotten. I get asked this a lot. One of the things I've come up with is if you're listening to this now and you're thinking, oh, my God, what the hell are we on about? You just tuned in. Bear with us. Put your hands out in front of you. Put them out. And just ask yourself this. When was the last time you thanked your hands and think how much they do for you? That's gratitude. That simple act is gratitude. You, everything, and if you're fortunate enough to have hands, you, you, you are blessed and you should be grateful. I know people that haven't got hands, arms, legs. I know people that can't see or can't hear. And they are thankful every single day and they find something to be grateful for every single day. And now I've got this concept of people saying, well, I can't be grateful for this because. Think about where you could be and where you are. Yeah, it's best not to take it for granted. Exactly. As soon as you change your perception on where you are, the way you view the world changes and the way the world views you changes. It's a two-way vibrational thing. Nothing is ever one way. Nothing is ever one way. This is true. I, I appreciate the fact that you mentioned the law of attraction. A lot of people can't wrap their mind around that. And often what I've seen, and I imagine you have people coming to you with this, this mindset, I've seen people feel downtrodden. I've seen people self-deprecate. I've heard people self-deprecate. But once you make the uh, decision to feel up on yourself and be grateful for the little things, it has, you know, that's the big thing. You're talking about, you're talking to us about a place where you come, where you were, you had it made in the shade. You didn't have to do what you did. You made a choice that was a choice that was, something selfless and then it did a number on you and you came out of it. All I can say is bravo and thank you for for sharing the story. I'm sure it was devastating. I want to have you back on the show, Baz, because I know you have so much more to, to, to share because I've read quite a bit about you and every time I think, okay, I've read enough and then I find there's something else. <laughs> <laughs> then like what <laughs> you know so i i'm going to ask you humbly if you'll come back on the show in the foreseeable future and and help my audience and help me again thank you uh, of course it'd be, i'd be an honor it'd be an honor to go back, come back on the show yeah that would be so great i wish that we had another hour or another <laughs> half hour but i'll ask you really quickly how could someone contact you what is the best way they can go to my website, which is bazporter.com, or Instagram, baz.porter. Instagram, you'll find me there. Just send me a DM. You know, it's, I'm, I'm happy to serve. Um, I'm always you know, happy to guide people and possibly change their life. You're extremely generous, and I, I, I predict that you will be further blessed for your generosity of spirit. It's not all about, it's not always about giving a handout or throwing somebody a couple bucks. You really giving of yourself. And I, I know that you'll be blessed for that because everybody that you come in contact is blessed to know you. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And I'll say good night to my, to my audience. And I always thank the audience for, for listening. Thank you so much for listening to the energy stoners cafe. Go, go forth and be nice and thank you again and bye bye I'll see you next time thank you for listening to the Energy Stoners Cafe are you looking for an internet talk radio station for your podcast look no further at the helm of passionate world talk radio are two women 
that want to provide a spot for you and your podcast to be heard. There are many other places for your podcast, but PWTR has the audience. You will not be disappointed. Our station has been on the internet for the past 16 years. Call us for more information. 484-364-1032 or text Jeannie White, station manager at T-H-E-C-O-N-N-E-C-T-S-H-O-W at gmail.com for a podcast show details. Thank you for listening to Passionate World Talk Radio. You can listen to this program all over again by going over to https colon forward slash forward slash passionate world talk radio dot com. You can also hear it on Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon A L E X A, AMFM two four seven dot com every Tuesday evening between eight and nine PM. YouTube Facebook, Facebook Live, LinkedIn, and all the other podcast directories one can find on the Internet.